And so the number one question I always get usually swirls around how do you evaluate a property to see if it's a good candidate for a flip, a remodel, a buy and hold, etc. In other words, a property that may need a little to a lot of work. And so in this video, I'll focus more or less on the flip and remodel side of it. And so here's a couple of check mark items that I would go over mentally in my head when evaluating a deal. And let's be real. If you really, really have to stew on a deal for too long, you're either not seeing enough deals or you're in a financial position where you might be willing to bend on some of the things that you probably shouldn't bend on. So number one, first rule of any flipper remodel is always to know your numbers inside and out. Now, what does that mean? When I say know your numbers, I feel like you need to know a best case, middle of the road and a worst case. And I would run everything based on my worst case number. Uh, the other thing that I'm also going to do is I have a general rule on this. And if a flip is going to return me some money, like I'm looking for at least a 3x return. And so that may sound a little bit high to those of you that don't do a lot of these, but I would tell you that the flip and remodel game, I don't believe in like small margins long term. Uh, a flip and a remodel job requires you in some cases to jump on, put in your GC hat, even if you have a GC that you've worked with for a while, because cost overruns, jobs going longer, things happening, material shortages, etc. You can expect those to pop up in a flip. And so as long as you've budgeted for those and your return still makes sense, then I would proceed with it. But knowing your numbers really boils down to acquisition price versus expected return. I double all of my timelines. I just want to make sure that I've got a real comfortable margin built in there that if things go haywire, and they usually do, even if you have the luck of the gods. So you want to make sure that you know your numbers ice cold. Number two, I always like to work with a real estate professional that knows the market and can help me dispose of the property quickly. Because if you've got carrying costs, if you've got hard money points tied up in this deal, you're going to want to get this thing to market and get it moved. So again, if properties don't move quickly enough, then what's the first thing a lot of wannabe investors sacrifice? They sacrifice their margin and they cut the price. And so why did you get into the deal in the first place? So number one, know your numbers. Number two, work with someone that can help you sell the property really, really quickly. And number three, make sure that you have an avatar in your mind of the type of property that you want to do. I don't see a lot of folks having a great amount of success flipping all kinds of things. Like either you're in the luxury space or you're in the mid-level market or you're in the below 350. 300 market and those are all three different very types of animals when it comes to flipping or remodeling so I think that until you've built up a track record and you're really really confident in your ability to forecast project a job run a job and then cross the finish line I would say pick a lane stay in it and don't get greedy so number one, know your numbers. Number two, work with someone that can help you sell it fast. Number three, make sure that you're only going after the type of deal that makes sense for you and your budget. I hope this has been helpful. I'm happy to do a deep dive on this. I know that's kind of surface level, but I would say with so many people trying to jump in and noodle around in the space, it kind of helps to have a place to begin with that makes sense for you. So thanks for watching, you guys. If this is your first time here, just click the like or subscribe button and let us know what you'd like us to talk about.